Dun 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 Brawl news! Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Karis Time and it is time to brawl. It's also time to talk about the next Brawl Stars update. I'm sure that by the time you're watching this video, you've probably already seen this update sneak peek released by Brawl Stars. And a lot of you have been asking me how it actually ties into the Brawl Stars theme park theory that I talked about in my last video and that you're really curious to know what kinds of things that I've learned that might be coming in the next update. That's exactly what I'm going to do in this video and then I'm going to speculate on some other possible things we might be getting in the update. But before we do that, you're going to want to subscribe for update information because Supercell is going to be giving me early access so I can cover everything with as much detail as possible. And this is a word from our sponsor. K-A-I-R-O-S, code Karis in the Brawl Star shop. Automatically makes all of your enemies walk into your Nani shots. Now, by the time that you're watching this, you've probably already seen this update hint and you already know a lot of the information on it. You've probably also seen some speculation videos as well. But let me do a quick rundown of what it contains for those that haven't seen it. And then we'll talk about what I have learned from it. On day one, there's news of steadily growing earthquakes in the depths of the ocean. On day two, a chemical spill pours into the sea and it turns toxic. On day three, a giant burrow appears on the beach. And on day four, an unidentified creature appears in the city. Now, as you can see, the creature is as big as a skyscraper. You also notice that as time progresses, max energy drink becomes progressively cheaper until the last day where it is completely free. And of course, it looks like Brawl Talk is going to be happening on the 27th. And as a side note, it looks like Spike took advantage of the chaos to steal 80 or 90 kilos of marshmallows. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, my unboxing challenge for Spike was actually marshmallows, which I think is just a coincidence, but it kind of made me happy inside. Almost like the developers are like, hey, Kairos, we've been watching you since the beginning. They subscribe and turn on the notification bell, guys. Now let's talk about what I think happened, and then we'll talk about what this reveals about the next update. I think the earthquakes were just a simple natural disaster, right? Earthquakes happen in the ocean all the time. Some type of a fault line or on the city, but they cause a leakage of the factory that produces max energy drink. I think that it's pretty clear that the toxins cause some sort of crazy mutation in one of the sea creatures and that that creature is the monster that appeared in the city. Now, I know that on day three, Rosa speculated that the giant burrow was like a crab-like creature, but I don't actually think that that's the case. Here's an image of the monster and it does not look like a crab at all, which is why I think that the monster is something else. More on that later. Now, there is a possibility that this giant monster is related to some sort of a special event that we might be getting in the next update, like, you know, the weekend special events. I don't actually think that that is the case either. I think that some sort of a special event is likely to happen in the next update, but I don't think it's going to have anything to do with this monster. I think we might be getting a new special event mode just because it's been a year and a half since boss fight was put into the game. But I think that this giant monster is actually a hint of the newest brawler coming to Brawl Stars. Let's talk about that brawler and then I will talk about how it ties into the theme park theory. And then we'll talk about the other stuff that I think we're going to be getting in the next update. You guys remember the last Brawloween update? Day where we had a little bit of a sneak peek, right? I'm talking about this little swamp creature that was noticed in the glowing toxic lake. I don't think it's a coincidence that he was found in toxic sludge, guys. I think he's addicted to this stuff. And since Brawloween, he's been looking for ways to get stronger. The glowing lake was not enough to make him strong enough to brawl, but when he heard about the toxins leaking into the ocean, he knew that he had an opportunity. What kind of an opportunity? The opportunity to destroy the city, of course. That's right, guys. This is Gil, a swamp creature who has mutated and evolved Evolved to destroy anything and everything in his path. Thank you to FreeFGP for the concept artwork. He's actually one of the many fantastic artists in my Discord server, which you should absolutely join using the link below. While you're at it, you might as well join Tribe's Discord server as well, where you can vote on the next Tribe videos that we're going to be doing. Now, a couple of months ago, I did a video where I predicted six brawlers based off of mechanics that are currently not in the game. And that actually led me to a Junker Trio brawler who could teleport and hit super hard with their attacks. Now, I obviously didn't get all the mechanics right, but that's actually pretty close to what we got with Nani, who completes Junker Trio, hits super hard and can teleport. Another brawler that I predicted in that video was actually a ramp up brawler. Now a ramp up brawler is one that starts out very weak, like the weakest in the game, but as the match progresses, they become stronger and stronger to become super strong by the end of the match. I think that Gil fits this description perfectly. He starts out like a little swamp creature and then grows to become stronger and stronger until he's nearly unstoppable. Now, there are a few different ways that Supercell could do a ramp up brawler. One way would be to make the brawler stronger and stronger depending on how much damage they've done or how many kills they've gotten. But another way that they could do this is with a gadget. The idea would be that Gil has three gadget uses, but it has a really long 
cooldown of like 30 seconds, plus it couldn't be used in the first 30 seconds of a match. And every time Gil uses his gadget, he becomes slightly faster and slightly tankier. Now with that third use, Gil would be as fast as Max or Crow, with the health kind of similar to Bull, so like really, really strong. I've also toyed with the idea that the shape of his attacks might actually change as well. So at the start of the match, he'd have a longer range, but it would be a narrower attack. And then the stronger that he gets, the attack would actually become shorter, but it would attack much wider, which would then make it a lot easier to hit targets. And then of course, Gil's attacks would be sludge balls that deal damage over time, kind of like Crow's daggers, right? I mean, he's a, he's a giant toxic sludge monster. Now, how does all of this tie into the Brawl Stars theme park theory? First of all, you got to realize that I am convinced that Brawl Stars is a theme park based off of the data that I covered in my last video. If you have not seen it, you have to see it. And unless Supercell does something to change my mind, I'm going to talk about Brawl Stars like it is a theme park because all evidence points towards it being a theme park. I think that this newspaper is actually just like an advertisement for an event happening in the park. And it's all about like hyping up a new part of the park that's being built up or building up stories surrounding the characters that help people fall in love with the brand. I don't think that there's an actual monster attacking the city that's close to the park or anything like that. But instead, this is how they're introducing a brand new villain to the Brawl Stars universe. You see, Brawl Stars has made it pretty clear that they are going to introduce villains into Brawl Stars when they did the hero and villain skin campaign on Supercell Make. But but there's also another reason why they need to add villains into the game. Just like Disneyland has many characters that you'd love as heroes, they also have villains that go around the park to entertain guests. And they're obviously not as popular as like a lot of the heroes, but some of them are crowd favorites like Darth Vader, right? You see Darth Vader walking around Disneyland, you're like, oh, that's Darth Vader. Guy, guy's pretty cool. Although, is he really a villain? I don't know. That's wrong topic for this channel. And Brawl Stars already has Max in the game who is a superhero. And to my knowledge, she's the only superhero brawler in the game. I do think that there's a possibility that El Primo might also be a superhero, but I still have to work out that theory a little bit. Either way, mark my words, Brawl Stars is eventually going to release at least one more superhero brawler into the game. And I think that they're going to release three super villains into the game. And for this update, I think we're going to see both a superhero brawler and a super villain brawler. As for their rare I think it's a no-brainer that we're gonna have at least one chromatic brawler that's gonna be available in the Brawl Pass. And then of course we're gonna get the second brawler like about a month after the update goes live. Now we currently have six epic and six mythic brawlers. That's the most that we have in any rarity aside from the trophy road brawlers. So I don't think that it's gonna be either of those rarities. We have five super rare brawlers, so there is a possibility that the brawler will be super rare, but I think it's most likely that we're going to get either a rare brawler or a legendary brawler because we only have four of each of those. Now, obviously, Supercell does not have to follow that pattern, but that's my best guess. So either everyone's going to have the new brawler or like nobody's going to have the new brawler. <laughs> However, we do have good news, and that is that Gale is going to drop from a legendary drop rate down to a mythic drop rate. So he'll actually be easier to unlock him if you haven't got him already. Now, when it comes to new environments, I wouldn't be surprised either way whether we got a new environment or we didn't. It seems like we've been getting a new environment like every other update, but the updates have actually been bigger than normal recently, but we've also been getting them slightly less frequently. I'm going to talk about that like a little bit later in this video. I would love it if they did like an environment that was like half hero themed and half villain themed. So it was like good versus evil kind of a thing. I think that would be super cool. I also think that there's a very good chance that we'll get a new Brawl Pass season that's going to be hero or villain themed as well. Okay, now I've talked a lot about superheroes and villains because like the newspaper just kind of fits that theme the most, but there's still a chance that we'll be getting something else that's a little bit less obvious. The Wild West thing that is in the game is the oldest theme in the game. And I think there's a very good chance that it's going to be redone to include a sheriff's building, a Ferris wheel like I suggested might actually happen in my Brawl Theory video. And that actually might tie very very nicely into the circus type theme that's been suggested a lot on the WKBRL stream that people have been talking a lot about, right? Also, now that the jungle trio is completed with Rosa, Bee, and Sprout, the jungle theme that used to be in the game might be getting revamped and being put back into the game with some type of like a greenhouse. There's also a chance that Supercell is going to completely throw us off and they're going to do a winter themed summer update, including Mr. P and Gale's Ice Hotel, as well as the release of a third snow themed brawler to complete their trio. We also might be getting a Mexican themed brawler to complete the trio with El Primo and Poco. Another trio that might be getting completed is the Piper and Barley City Brawlers. There's a lot of different themes that Supercell could very likely do to add new brawlers into the game. Now let's talk about other things that we know are coming in this update. We know that the ability to use pins as emotes mid battle is going to be an option. And I know that this is somewhat controversial, but as long as Supercell does it the right way so that they're like not too annoying, I'm 
actually really excited about this. I will say though, I really hope that there is a way for you to be able to hide the emotes from the enemy team. Even if that means that when you're in the bush, the enemy team can't see it and only your teammates will be able to see them. I don't like spamming against the enemy team, but there are a lot of times when I want to be like, hey guys, good push. And if I just had to go into a bush to like do that, I do that all the time. I run into the bush, I spin, and then I go out. So the enemy team doesn't know that I'm spinning on them because I'm not, I'm just like saying, dude, that was a great play to my teammates, right? I also really hope that you're going to be able to mute them some way so that the emotes do not get too spammy. I hope that they're able to also add some animated pins as well. That is something that Frank has talked about being added into the game. It's something that we're going to get eventually. It's just a matter of time. And I just hope that it happens this update. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we know that we're getting a second season for the Brawl Pass. And with that, there's a really good chance that we'll see some tweaks in the amount of value that we get out of the second season in comparison to the first season. Don't worry though, guys, I already got my spreadsheet. I'm, I'm ready to compare the two seasons together. Of course, I'm gonna let you guys know which one was more valuable. There is a chance that the values of the two seasons are going to be exactly the same, but I am expecting some tweaks. Maybe just like a little bit, either in the, the positive direction or the negative direction. But no matter what they do, I'm definitely gonna be happy with what they do. After all, the economy for all players, including free to play players, had a massive boost in the last update. Now, as a side note, I know that a lot of people are concerned about losing the progress that you've gotten in the current Brawl Pass season once the next season starts, like losing the boxes that you don't open before the next season starts. It has been confirmed by Supercell that you will be able to claim rewards from season one even after season two starts. So you definitely do not need to worry about losing it. What we don't don't know though is whether or not you'll actually lose the quests that you have not completed if you do not finish them before the next season starts. For that reason, I highly recommend finishing all of your quests before the next weekend ends because season one ends on June 6th and that is when season two starts. Now, before I end this video, I wanted to briefly talk about how big I think this update is going to be like in comparison to all Supercell Brawl Stars updates. Now, I mentioned earlier that Brawl Stars has shifted their update schedule. Rather than releasing a medium sized update every one to one and a half months, Brawl Stars has kind of locked themselves into a two month update schedule with the release of their Brawl Pass seasons that have lasted 60 days long. And that has actually led to much bigger updates for the last couple of updates. We've gotten gadgets that have added a whole new level of strategic depth in the game. We've also gotten a complete rework of the economy with the addition of the Brawl Pass. And those are huge changes. And it's actually reflected a lot in like the number of people playing Brawl Stars. I don't actually get to see those numbers, but what I do see is that how many people are actually watching Brawl Stars on YouTube. And that has definitely increased over the past several months. That's actually really exciting because Brawl Stars is around a year and a half since its global release. And that has me really hopeful that this next update is is going to be pretty big. And I'm really hopeful that we'll have something that is going to be put into the game that's gonna add a lot of content over a long period of time because this is the time that Supercell typically gives their employees a month off. I don't know Supercell's schedule, but I think that Brawl Stars is going to release this update. They're gonna like make sure that things are fine. And then most of them are just gonna like go off and take a month long vacation, which is actually customary. It's not just customary. It's like legally mandated for full-time employees in Finland. Now this has me hopeful that this update is actually going to be pretty massive. And there's a good chance that the next one afterwards is probably gonna be a little bit smaller. Either way, I'm super excited to see what we get and you're going to want to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you do not miss any sneak peeks as soon as Supercell lets me give them to you. Thank you for watching through the end of the video. Use code Karras in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Karras time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.